Hi, my name is Dr. Jamie Adam, and I teach pharmacology. And all the time my students are saying, ah, how are we going to remember all of this information? And there's so much to remember about these different drug classes. So I wanted to use a concept map today and kind of help describe some of the key concepts that you need to take away and remember for your next test about opioids. So this concept map is one that one of my students created, and I think it will serve as a great backdrop for our discussion. So why do we give opioids? Well, opioids are for pain management and not just a little bit of pain, not just that very simple, you know, maybe a two out of 10 pain rating, but it's for the more severe pain. So these are your patients that would describe their pain as 10 out of 10 or eight out of 10 or seven out of 10. So this is pretty significant pain. And usually we see this kind of pain when we have patients who are post-op, maybe they've had surgery or a severe injury or some kind of severe trauma or accident. So with, these, with this drug class, really what's happening in the body is this drug class is mimicking what your body is able to do naturally. So within the body, we have natural opioid receptors, and these receptors are triggered in time of severe pain. So when we give these, these opioid medications, we're really trying to mimic what the body is able to do on its own, but we're trying to give extra or additional. We're trying to trigger those receptors in the body to be able to release some some of that pain, the, the, the pain relief that that patient is really needing. So when this happens, of course, there's always the potential for some adverse effects. So in addition to the feelings of, of um, relief and sometimes euphoria, opioids also have the potential to cause some pretty significant adverse effects. So we don't give them to everyone for everything. We limit them to certain acute situations where we have severe pain. So let's talk about that. So what, what are some of the um, adverse effects that we might see? Well, really, if, um, you, know, if you know, sedation, sleepiness, drowsiness, um, but also there's the potential for respiratory depression. Um, the IV forms of opioids can cause a drop in blood pressure, um, constipation, urinary retention, nausea, vomiting. So there's a lot of different potential adverse effects, even cough suppression, which, you know, cough suppression in someone who's post-op, who's receiving an opioid pain reliever, that could be pretty serious. That could lead to dangerous atelectasis or pneumonia um, that could impact their gas exchange. So we worry about these things with our patients, and that's a lot of what our monitoring is for. I really like over here in the concept map, this student has really highlighted that. These are some of those key adverse effects that the nurse is going to watch for. Now, in addition to watching for those things, a lot of times we, we try to manage it. We know that a patient who is receiving an opioid is probably going to deal with constipation. That's a pretty fairly common adverse effect. So it would be very appropriate for us to give laxatives to this patient, to encourage a high fiber diet, um, to in encourage them to increase their water intake, all of that would be very appropriate. We would also teach them to avoid other CNS depressants because anything that makes a patient drowsy could also worsen the drowsiness that they experience with an opioid. And, you know, sometimes students, they're, they're trying to remember, okay, how many opioids do we have? We have so many opioids. So, you know, being familiar with what the common types of opioids are is important. So uh, this student has highlighted morphine, which is very common, Demerol, which is meperidine, Percocet, also known as oxycodone. We also have hydrocodone um, that we see a lot of times in Lortab. Um, we have uh, hydromorphone, which is Dilaudid. So uh, codeine is an example. These are all examples of opioid pain relievers. So, you know, one of the things we want to do when we give pain medicine is we want to evaluate this drug. So how's the patient tolerating it? Are they having adverse effects? 
Um, and how is, how's the patient's body responding to this opioid? And then the other side of evaluation is really making sure it's working. So how do we know this drug is effective? So we really rely on the pain scale and we may use pictures or we may use numbers. We're checking to see, is this medication helping our patient? We can also look for nonverbal signs. So if that patient Maybe they were gripping the side rails when you came in with their pain medicine, um, and now they're relaxed, and maybe they're resting. Maybe they're resting with their eyes closed, and, um, and their body is relaxed, and it tells you that this pain medication is having an effect. And really, for our post-op patients, a lot of times what we like to see is when that patient receives pain medication, we like that they then feel good enough to participate in physical therapy, to get up and sit beside Side their bed or get up and be able to ambulate or be able to do whatever physical therapy exercises have been ordered, if their pain is under control, they're going to be a lot more available to participate in their own care, which means they're going to get better faster, they're going to get discharged faster. So these are all ways that we see that opioids are working and we like to see that. Now, there's always the potential for opioid overdose. And when that happens, there's really three hallmark signs that we have to worry about. So I'm going to I'm going to circle this down here. You're really looking for a um a reduced level of consciousness, so even to the point of coma, uh pinpoint pupils and a, a low respiratory rate. So if that respiratory rate is below 10, we're going to be we're going to be concerned if their pupils are pinpoint and if their level of consciousness have, has changed to where maybe they're very difficult to wake up, very difficult to arouse, then those are three signs that they may be experiencing an opioid overdose. So if that happens, we do have an antidote for opioid overdose, and it is Narcan or Naloxone, and this is our antidote drug. So this is a drug that's on every crash cart. Um, it's always available in case of an emergency, and now it's even becoming more popular in the community for our patients that, are, that uh, struggle with opioid addiction or even those that are on opioids long term because of chronic pain. So that is your opioid overview. Now, you might be sitting here thinking, okay, I see the benefit of putting it all on one page in a concept map, but how do I do that? How do I figure out how to study for all of these medications? How do I figure out how to study for nursing school? Well, I've created a free PDF ebook for you. All you need to do is download it from the link below. It's going to walk you through how to study in nursing school so that you are well prepared for your next test. I want you to get an A. So you are going to be well prepared with this ebook. So I hope you check it out. Thanks so much for joining me today. Bye bye.